Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by John Duncan, who's Professor of Neurology at University College London. Professor Duncan, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Yeah, oh, thank you. Could you outline some of the main findings of your report? I think the key thing to bear in mind is this is a very long-term follow-up with patients having surgery back to as far as 1990. So we have up to 19 years follow-up. And a key difference from our report compared with many other epilepsy surgery studies is that we have a very large cohort and patients were followed up year by year. So we got a picture of what happens to seizures over the whole course of time after their surgery with uh, over 5,200 patient years of follow-up. And I think there are, th there are three main findings. One is that 82% uh, of people had at least one seizure-free year in the course of follow-up. Now that, of course, is very good because these people were having seizures often many times a month uh, prior to surgery. But also it makes, makes the point that although that's a good result in itself, that isn't an absolute cure. And if one looks for absolute cure as meaning the person has surgery and never has another seizure again of any description, it's down to 42%. If one then allows people to have very brief warnings, say a feeling in the stomach or a feeling of deja vu that wouldn't be apparent to an onlooker, it's a further 10%. So 52% of people after epilepsy surgery at our hospital and never had another seizure other than just maybe a feeling of deja vu or a feeling of warmth or a rising feeling in, in the abdomen. And they would feel that no, it was really a, a, a very good result. So by and large, you'd say epilepsy surgery is successful. Yes, I think the key thing to bear in mind is that if somebody has focal epilepsy, by that I mean seizures arising in one part of the brain, and if the medications are not successful, surgery should be considered sooner rather than later. But if someone's tried three epilepsy drugs, three of the mainstream drugs, the chances of drugs 4 through 20 stopping their seizures is really no more than 5 to 10%. Whereas if surgery is suitable for them, the odds of success is much, much better. So I suppose the question coming out of this then is why don't we refer patients for surgery earlier? One of the facets of this study was that the average time, the median time between onset of epilepsy and surgery was still approaching 20 years, no, a very long time. Particularly when one bears in mind that the majority of epilepsies of this nature start in maybe the first or second decade of life and then the average age at surgery tends to be around about the age of 30 in this adult population. Now of course uh, a caveat is that this by definition is an adult cohort and individuals less than 17 years old wouldn't have surgery at this hospital and so wouldn't be part of this group. But that's a very important 20 years. It means people are going through their teenage years, schooling, getting qualifications, making friends, perhaps you know, forming partnerships, getting into the workplace. And if epilepsy is disrupting that time, that has you no know, very far-reaching consequences for them. If surgery is considered much earlier, the person may have a much better chance of resuming normal life, having had an illness for two or three years that you know, then soon fades into the background for them. Why doesn't this happen? Well, I think in the main, it's down to, or has been down to reluctance of secondary care providers, particularly say in paediatrics or in neurologists who don't specialize in epilepsy, to consider and to refer patients for surgery. Now, of course, there is a resource limitation. Epilepsy surgery is very complicated. It's totally not the case that any neurosurgeon who can do a craniotomy can do epilepsy surgery. And the development of the resources for epilepsy surgery has grown over the last few years. And at the moment, I think uh, the main limitation, the main reason why people are waiting such a long time is that they simply aren't being identified and aren't being referred. And there's a real push on, particularly in paediatric practice, for children developing epilepsy, having it for two or three years, to be referred for surgery uh, at that time rather than leaving it 10, 20 years.